Welcome to our weekly discussion about a current issue for Vermonters. Um, we had previously discussed gas prices, and the question we posed last week for you to comment on on Facebook, on my Facebook page, uh, was whether you feel more safe in Vermont. And of course, the answers would vary depending on what people, where people live, and I anticipated that. Um, interestingly, when it comes to gas prices, gas prices rising quickly would more impact people who are rural and have long commutes, whereas people in cities may not see an immediate impact. Heating oil, they may. Um, in this case, of course, with the criminal issue, you, I can see by the responses, as one would expect, that people in more rural parts of Vermont feel safer. Um, and people in Burlington, many people here make comments uh, that they won't go to Burlington anymore. And so obviously you would expect that. But overall, our crime statistics are up. Um, it's sad, though, that that Burlington is suffering this way. Cheryl Anderson says that she's a native that went there for a long time and now she said she's only been once in the last two years. Um, other, another person pointed out they're only really worried about bears. Um, so clearly they live in a rural area and um, I'm amused as a, an outdoorsman because I really never worry about bears at all. I'd, I'd um, sooner worry about a fisher cat if I worried about anything I guess, but not to disparage that. But so. But we do see a lot of comments here about people worried about what's gone on in Burlington and about defund the police and about um, BLM and other movements there that ha have made people less safe. And so I, this dovetails with an article that I just had out with True North Reports. And in it, I talk about um, the decriminalization and the justice reinvention and these other programs of so-called social justice that take people who are dangerous urban criminals and unleash them back into society in some kind of idea that they're going to restore themselves with the victims and not just create new victims. Um, attacking the police, and, and I write in the article, attacking the police and removing them from the streets, dropping cash bail and reducing criminal penalties happens to be a far more effective recruitment technique for out-of-state criminal entrepreneurs than $10,000 payments to employees to come live here. In the long run, it costs us a lot more though. But that's really what we're doing. Um, the numbers don't lie in Vermont. The, uh, the crime rate has been going up statewide very steadily. Yeah, a lot of it's in Burlington. We see the headlines, but it's not just in Burlington. There's been a very visible rise in serious crimes. As I cite in the article, uh, this is since fo uh, COVID as well, but even before that, we've seen more fentanyl deaths, as many people know. Uh, Serious crimes in Vermont increased 62.3% from 2015 to 2016. Federally reported violent crimes in Vermont increased 26.9% from 2016 to 2017. Uh, they were flat in 18. And then serious crimes increased a whopping 102.2% in 2019 over 2018. We don't seem to have numbers for 2020 yet. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I, or 2021 anyway. Um, so this left-wing extremism in the name of social justice, really experimentation, is exposing more and more Vermonters to risk and to death, to fentanyl overdoses, but also the violent crime that goes along with it. And we see this in a recent uh, police article in the uh, Times Argus just uh, a couple of days ago, July 22nd, in Roxbury, Vermont. So now the Northfield Police, uh, Chief John Helfant, um, and others have been watching a trailer in Northfield that was just raided. Um, this is now rural Vermont. Uh, but the, one of the two chief uh, people they think were selling drugs out of this place is named Kamari Hollis, 26, believed to be from Connecticut. And my research shows that he's from Hartford, Connecticut. Now, even though my family are many generations from Vermont and I grew up coming and staying right here, I grew up in Connecticut and graduated East Hartford High School and I was a criminal defense attorney in those courts for a number of years as a public defender, as well as privately, including in Hartford. And I was uh, living near and on these streets at a young age. And I know what that urban world is compared to Roxbury, Vermont. But at any rate, so this guy had um, crack cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, and powder cocaine with intent to distribute. And when they arrived there, he uh, was apprehended reaching for uh, an apparently loaded 45 caliber a semi-automatic handgun. Uh, a number of other people were arrested. They were 19-year-old locals, by the looks of it, who were probably there uh, for charged with possession to buy drugs. 
reportedly over 40 visits a day to this trailer in Roxbury. If you don't know where Roxbury is, it's because it's right out in the middle of the woods and it's not a place you'd expect. And yet the trafficking is everywhere. And the, uh, I am a, a certified Vermont recovery coach and I work with people in uh, addiction and I'm very sympathetic to it. Um, but there's a lot of violent crime that goes along with this and it's an encouragement to out-of-state drug traffickers to bring the fentanyl here because that's where it all comes from. All the heroin and everything else comes from out-of-state to be soft on crime. And that's what this question on Facebook raised. That's what my article shows statistically is happening. While many people wish to turn their other eye, their, uh, turn their eyes the other way or even say, well, it's, it's just okay. This is what life's like. No. It's not about race. There's a big difference between crime in an urban world and a rural one. And in fact, part of this arrest was dovetailed with um, a stolen Yamaha four-wheeler and a plow from Northfield, which were found at the trailer. And having seen that was, I think, the basis for the warrant that allowed them to collect the drugs. And this was a lot of drugs. Uh, let's see. Um, and it reminded me of some of the cases I was involved in. There were 560 grams of crack cocaine, so that's like 20 ounces of crack. 420, that's a lot of crack cocaine. 422 individual glassine bags of heroin or fentanyl, 116 grams of fentanyl, and 50 grams of powder cocaine, records show. I've had clients uh, with near those amounts, and that is, that is a huge amount of uh, drugs. Moreover, uh, as the police point out, uh, they were adding the fentanyl to the cocaine because, quote, Hollis has and sells crack cocaine and heroin, but most of the time puts fentanyl in the crack because people buy more of it, the court affidavit noted. Well, this is what I've learned in my work uh, studying addiction, is that if you warn people that there's fentanyl and drugs on the street or even heroin, they don't avoid it because of death. They go to it because they get more for their money. Um, this is a horrible scourge. The, uh, the, uh, the, the answer is not to incarcerate people for mere uh, possession offenses, but neither is it to throw open the doors to trafficking and the related violent criminal element that it invites to come do business in Vermont. We're a tourism state, supposedly. We're a farming state, but we're becoming an opioid trafficking state. So thank you for your answers and your responses, and I do hope that uh, more of Vermont experiences less crime, whether rural or urban, in the future. And I certainly intend to run as senator to, and, and with my experience in criminal law, to try to find that balance between compassion and protecting the public. And I really think we're swinging too far the other way in Vermont. So it, it's very saddening and I, it, it may take time to reverse. And as I say in the article, people are hiring private security to go to work in Burlington and the graffiti is out of control and the police say, well, if you get any, you better remove it really quickly because otherwise others will come tag it. It's very expensive. It's destroying businesses. And I don't know what that city will look like in two more years of these policies. Please vote for Republicans who are moderate on crime, at least, um, and vote out people like Sarah George who are so liberal that they're exposing our most vulnerable citizens to crime and robbery and the statistics prove it, and to fentanyl and other drug trafficking. Thank you very much for listening.